Hi guys, today I'd like to share with you a CPU that I built on a piece of circuit design software called Logisync. Logisync is great for creating basic circuits as well as more complex ones. Uh, so I'll include a download link in the description if you want to check that out. So the aim for this project was to show how every CPU can be made from just a few basic building blocks, such as AND, OR, and NOT gates in this case. So for the most part, pre-built Logisync components weren't used, such as the, the adder component, this would be made from just and or and not. I've written a large report discussing the project in detail, so I'll make it available for you guys to check out if you want to know more about the design or the research carried out during the project. Now let's look at some of the features of the CPU. It contains a main system bus for data to travel along, such as addresses and instructions, um, a 32 address memory unit capable of storing 32 16-bit words. Contents of memory can be seen here. At the moment they're all zeros because we haven't saved a program into memory yet. Uh, it contains a program counter, a memory address register, and instruction register, which are used in fetching instructions from memory. It also has a register file, which contains four 8-bit data registers to save values during calculation. Uh, we can see the contents of the data registers here, but there are errors at the moment because we haven't initialized them. Uh, an ALU capable of performing addition, subtraction, multiplication, and all logical operations. A control unit that sets tri-state gates at the correct time in order to fetch instructions from memory and then execute them. Uh, it also contains a screen which shows results as a decimal number rather than a binary number, which is useful when performing programs. But before we look at the program running, we should look at the custom designed assembly language that the instructions are written in. Instructions have a 16 bit length. The first four bits are the opcode, which encodes the operation that the instruction performs. A list of opcodes can be seen here. Uh, we have four bits, which allows for 16 unique operations. The next two bits are the addressing mode, which encodes how data will be transferred between components. Uh, we can see the different addressing modes here. So for example, 00, 0 is a register to register transaction, whereas 0, 01 is an immediate value to a register transaction. Um, offering 1 is always a register address. Since we have four registers, only, it only needs to be two bits long. Offering 2 varies in length depending on the addressing mode. It can be a two bit register address if the addressing mode is 00. zero. It can be an 8-bit literal if the addressing mode is 0, 01, or it can be a 5-bit memory address if the addressing mode is 10 or 11. Um, now that we've seen the instructions, we'll go back and to the CPU and see how a series of instructions are performed to create programs. As we can see, I've loaded a program into memory which computes 5 factorial. Now, the control unit fetches the first instruction from memory by setting tri-state gates to move data between components. As we can see, the first instruction has been clocked into the instruction register and is now being decoded by the control unit. Uh, the first instruction moves the literal 5 into register R0, so we should see that R0 will contain 5, and we do. And so the next instruction will be fetched from memory. This instruction moves the little 5 into R1 this time. So as we can see, the instruction has been completed. And we now fetch the next instruction from memory. This instruction subtracts 1 from R0. So if we have a look at some of the timings this time, we should be able to see that R0 has been allowed onto bus A with the value that it currently has to go back to the main circuit. We can see that the ALU oper operation selected is subtraction. And the literal one is being sent from the instruction register. So we can see that the result is four, which is the correct result. So if we continue, it should be placed back into R0 and we can see that it has decreased by 1. So the next instruction multiplies R1 by R0, storing the result in R1. So again, we go through, we see 
So the opcode has been set to multiply and the result is correct. So this should now be moved back into R1, which it is. And then again, we subtract one from R0. So the next instruction, if we fetch it from memory, is a branch if not equal instruction. Uh, it's used to check if the last the result of the last operation was zero or not, which we can see from the zero flag stated here in the ALU. Um, if it is not zero, then we branch back to address eleven, or three as seen here. Um, if it was zero, we continue in sequence and fetch the next instruction. Here, which is a trap instruction to read the result onto a screen. Um, if it was zero, then the program would be completed and we would have the five factorial answer. But since we do not, we should branch back to the third address and then fetch it from memory. As we can see, this is the multiply uh, instruction. So we now multiply R0 by R1 again. And the process is completed until uh, is repeated until the Z flag is true, which will happen when R zero is zero. So if I run the simulation through, we can see that R zero is now zero. The Z flag has been uh, is true, and the control unit knows this and has carried out the instructions in sequence rather than taking the branch and so we have trapped the result which is 120 onto the screen. The purpose of this video was to demonstrate a CPU. If you would like to view all of the circuits I'll make the CPU available to download so there'll be a link in the description for that. Uh, don't forget to check out the report I mentioned earlier if you want an explanation of how all of the circuits work. Um, so that's it, thanks for watching, bye guys!